Hey guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 3! Last time, we switched perspectives and took a look at all of our other characters that are not Xion, and her ragtag group of uh, Miyuki and Kanan. Kind of a strange combination, but anyway, we get to see most of our other characters here, and we also get a second battle tutorial with our mechs. Now, here we have Anima Awakening, and basically what that is, is it's the uh, little meter down in the bottom right corner with the uh, purple, or I guess that's kind of purplish, uh, coloring, and the zero at the end. They'll indicate it there, and once you get up to 100%, you have an Anima level. You can use the Anima ability there, and once you become Anima, your uh, energy consumption will be reduced, and I believe you also get uh, status effects removed if you happen to be succumbing to them at the time. And you also have to be able to use the special attacks, very much like the other battles that we can do, the character battles. Finish strikes can only be accomplished by using these special attacks. As you can see, there's a very large limit on what types of attacks you can do to get yourself additional experience and all that other stuff. The finish strikes in the mech battles work Let's the same see how way. Far my blades will go against you. As they do in the character battles. So anyway, uh, for going against them, you're pretty much stuck just using our best attacks, the same Here that we've been doing before. Co-op is something they haven't gone over yet. There is a percentage uh, chance to do a co-op or even an ambush, I believe is what it's called, when you get all three mechs involved in it. Now, that percentage is relatively low normally, but it goes up a lot if you're unlocked in your animal levels. And I'll go over that uh, later on when it becomes more important. For now, this one has Might Down. If you look at the bottom there, so I'm actually going to use that one in hopes to inflict that status effect. Eh, it doesn't seem like that has worked for me. If you press the L1 button, you can check your statuses, make sure you're not suffering from any status effects. Let's go for it again, see if I can inflict it there. Now, you'll be able to see uh, the character will have like a little icon that'll indicate that they're suffering from a status effect. Both your characters and your opponents will. Um, if you have the sensor ability on, which you get later on, then you'll be able to see the amount, uh, what status is the opponent is suffering from. For you, just hit the L1 button, just like I was showing there, and it'll show you which status effects you're suffering from. This battle really isn't all that difficult. Uh, I'll show you the difference between me and you. Yeah, he gets a little bit buffed up as the battle progresses and eventually he will unlock his own uh, anima level thing. Uh, let's go for that one, hopefully I can get close. No, not quite. All right, one more attack and you should have your anima level as well. Now, once I've gotten him down to about half, then I'm gonna start launching anima attacks because from what I recall, that should be more than enough Don't to take him down. Alive. Is that the extent of your power? I'm beating you. Yeah, here he goes into Animal Awakening, and he's going to hurt the Reuben a lot. In fact, I should probably heal him. Um, yeah, you can attack like that, and you can do that. Maybe you'll get the Satisfact or not. And you can use a Nano Repair M, which recovers half of your HP. At least I believe it's half. Yeah. It's about half, anyway. So anyway, there's a little recovery if you need it. You probably don't need to worry about it in this fight. I'm just babbling along and going over basic strategies early on. And at this point, we'll start unleashing our, our, our anima levels here. Now, once you do anima, you can go to level 1, 2, and 3. Uh, you get them at specific times throughout the game. It's not based on levels. Uh, it's all plot related. Once you go anima, you get another turn. And if you go to attack, if you'll notice the energy cost is actually lower. So we can actually, right now we can't do any additional attacks, but later on it'll allow us to do more attacks in the same turn, which is very good. Here we get our 
different types of attacks that we get for special. Uh, each uh, animal level has its own special attack, and you can only use that one in that specific level. So if you go to level 3 anima, you won't be able to use your level 1 attack. You can only use your level 3 attack, and so on and so forth. As you can see, these attacks do way more damage than we can, and I probably won't even need uh, to worry about the other ones. Well, get used to seeing the Ryubin using uh, this attack, because we probably won't see him do it again. Yeah, kind of sad. But it makes sense that he gets the kill over uh, Margulis there. Man, we get our finish strike, so we get additional points, which is nice. Gotta love them points. And we learned lots of abilities, some which are useful, some which are not. Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, there's, I think it's either in the perfect guide or the official guide, Colonel, there's a list. What is Ormus so concerned about? What lies asleep in this place? And that list will go over the strengths and how much damage approximately your different attacks will do. And I don't know, it's kind of weird. I found a link on GameFAQs that are like a little a forum there, and it, uh, and it seemed to work fine I for me. I have nothing else to say to you. You should be ashamed of your ignorance. Now it's time for you to die. Well, that's one of the best things about introducing What's Jin. This? What? Since Jin's come, we've had three awesome Hello. battles What's happening? with Margulis. It's a space-time transfer. An anomaly has manifested around the landmass. Imaginary number values increasing. The phenomenon surface is rotating in reverse phase. <laughs> and that means... You have to get out of here now. Yeah, that's what it looked like it was going to do. You won't get away from me that easily. Who's okay? Hey, look, help! Do not interfere! Well, that's not gonna go well. Captain! Hurry! You must escape! They headed for the Holy Land! How dare they! Let them go, Margulis! Who? <laughs> but I... Your Eminence, how can you say that? The Blessed Saint sleeps in that land. She is already in our possession. Even if they were able to reach the place, there would be nothing for them to find there. What was that? And who Don't is tell this? tell me you have already acted. Yes. I have a new task for you. Return at once. Do you understand? Yes, Your Eminence. And that is... what, exactly? Uzuki, unfortunately, we'll have to settle this later. In the meantime, I want you to concentrate on saving your friends. You have got to think of something to help them out at this point. That is, if there is a way to help save their poor souls. I don't know what kind of ship that is, but... But, Colonel... I would guess it's some kind of ship. <laughs> kind of looks weird, but oh well. A lot of things will look weird in this game. From all the gnosis to, well, most of these guys. Hurry up and reverse the thrusters. That border surface is nasty. It'll grind the ship to dust. Yeah, that's the first time we get a voice actor for the professor. And even though the, everything we did in episode two that dealt with him was all just kind of stupid comedy stuff, the fact that he actually set up his lab on the ship has plot relevance in this game. He's here, and he has a voice actor now, and he's more important to the plot than ever, considering he never was before. It's kind of weird that he is now, but oh well. Ah! This, this ain't happening. happening. This, this ain't, ain't happening. happening. Sounds like something that might happen. Yep. Damn it, the logical drive is shot. We don't have any power. It's no good. It won't hold. So what are we going to do now? We're going to crash! Brace yourselves! That sounds like a bad idea. Since none of our characters are on the ship at the time, who wants to guess what we're doing next? Mary, can you locate the Elsa's position? Pretty no. much that. Wait a sec. 
How are we? Did you trace it? IFF lost, unable to determine the Elsa's location. Were they shot down? No way. Besides, we didn't detect any explosions. Marculus threw his sword at happen. them. We won't be able to learn any more from here. Let's hurry to Little Master's location. Yeah. So. Hear that, Little Master? Basically. Wait just a little bit. Yeah, gotcha. Please hurry. Even though in the last hey, area. Let's look over there. Or rather, the last the episode. Ruben's sensors won't be able to show us anymore. We'll have to wait for the Durandal's arrival. Damn it! Just be okay, guys. Yeah, in the uh, previous episode, we basically told them. It's like, Same no, no, thing? no, we don't need the Durandal. We'll be fine. No, we're not. Anyway, we can save the game now. I'm not going to do that on screen because... Shut game. up. Because, uh, yeah. I don't want to show off all of my completed save files, which will probably pop up first. Time to rock, and she is no longer wearing her swimsuit. This is her new outfit for the game, which I approve of. I think it's actually more interesting than what she was wearing in the previous game. But pretty much all of her outfits have been at least somewhat interesting. At least it's not like Momo, where in the second game she just kind of looks... I don't know, I personally I think she looked foolish in that game. I don't know why they, they went that direction, but... It doesn't really matter. I just like poking fun at games for this and for that. But that music tells me they're about One to year talk. Has now passed since the battle in Old Milshan's face. So I'll shut up. Ever since the Zoar was swallowed up by the giant Gnosis, the Gnosis phenomenon has increased in frequency, and the people are now constantly exposed to its threat. Yet, Despite the large number of star systems that have been destroyed by the Gnosis, people continue to resist, refusing to cooperate with each other and engaging in one pointless conflict after another. I found myself full of questions. I wanted to know more about the immigrant fleet, the organization that was behind the Milshan conflict, as well as the words that were spoken by the Patriarch Sergius. He said that the Ormus are the rightful possessors of the Zohar. So I began to investigate. I wanted to know more about the relationship between the Milshan conflict and the Zohar on my own. Six months ago, I encountered a group of people called Skientia. I was able to obtain their aid as I found myself becoming more and more involved in an incident that revolved around a mysterious program called Lemigeton. It turned out to be a Zohar control program, which was developed during the Lost Jerusalem era. Its creator, Grimoire, continued to wander the UMN as a mental entity in search of a being. He was searching for Nephilim, the girl in the white dress that has appeared before me countless times. The existence of an organization controlling Grimoire from the shadows came to light. Vector's Special Technology Advancement Division. This department, jointly managed by the government and private industry, had been wiped from the records. But there was no doubt it had been created by the organization I worked for. Vector also had contact with the UTIC organization, and the UTIC organization was connected with Ormus. But the evidence was concealed, and the truth had been buried away into the darkness. Everything except for one fact. I found out the name of the individual, who was in the lead position at that time in the management office. When I saw the name, Suo Uzuki, I felt nothing. No surprise, no sadness, and no anger. To be honest, I felt nothing at all. Somewhere in my heart, I think that I must have expected it. All I could feel was a sense of resignation, knowing 
that the inevitable had finally come to pass. And I decided to quit my job at Vector. The friends I made there, and Cosmos, were the only bonds I had linking me to Kevin. But I couldn't stand being there any longer. Maybe I did it to atone for all of the victims. Maybe it was to strike back at my late father, who had abandoned my mother. No, it wasn't for either of those reasons. It was probably that I... And that's our kind of introduction. Xion kind of explains some of the things that uh, we could have learned from the database. But she goes over the important points of why she is Let's where see. she is. I'm supposed to meet him at the hotel. There's still some time. I think I'll look around the city. That sounds like a great idea. Anyway, that opening cutscene, it's not really the opening cutscene, but we are in uh, Fifth Jerusalem actually. I don't think, does it say? Let's take a look at how many database things have opened up. Yeah, over 50% and let's take a look at my time. Two hours. If you skip the cutscenes and just do the stuff that you actually can do, it's about 45 minutes into the game. 45 minutes into the game, we have access to over 50% of the database. And no, I'm not going to go over all of these. Now, just like I did in uh, episode one, I'm not going to go over all of them. I will go over certain ones that I find interesting. I haven't gone over them as of yet, so I will look into them on my own time, and then we will uh, take a look. This guy says to try pressing the square button, and this introduces us to a new dynamic in the game. Uh, any characters that you walk by, NPCs, whatever, they will have a random, well, it's not random, but they'll have a dialogue box that'll pop up. And if you press the square button on any of their uh, points, like if you go over and talk to this dude over here, it'll have a square button on one thing or another. And yeah, they're talking about uh, the Dina, which of course is not an eggs or names, it is an ES. Technically, it's based on the Ames design. It just uses the uh, the vessel of Anima as its uh, control mechanism and its power source. Anyway, yeah, sure. Okay, the orbital elevator. Now, I'm not going to talk to everybody because there's a lot of dialogue, but I will talk to a bunch of people, especially early on. Now, as you can see, we're on a, a thingy, so I'm just going to kind of hold over here so I can get this dialogue to show up. Scary monsters. Okay. So, basically, be nice to your kid. And, yeah, if you notice there, got brighter, darker, brighter, darker. That is, again, dealing with the same issue I mentioned to you guys before and why I had changed my settings. Now, I'm going to go straight into those now, into the video, plug-in settings, and just so I can show you one more time, and I'm going to go there. Now, what I'll do is I'll probably put this on for the cities and hopefully the cutscenes, but uh, I'll probably turn it off when it comes to battle since it seems to be slowing down the battles for me. That is one hell of you, Merkaba. Uh, we we kind of learned a little bit about that, either through the database or through uh, some dialogue that some people have talked about. Basically, it's our last effort. There is a museum about it, which contains a lot of dialogue. Very little of which is of any interest. Um... Oh yeah, he was probably waiting for a girl or something. Somebody in a Vector uniform acting strange. Yeah, I, I think we know who this is. Reserved a really expensive room. Poor Alan, he's stupid as all hell. Anyway, yeah. Now, in order to do this, let's go to Fifth Jerusalem. 
Now, I believe talking to her, I should have talked to her actually, this process going all the way down, there you go, this very large, very, 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 very large tower should take about four hours. <laughs> So yeah, technically we just have a four hour gap or four or five hours or whatever it is. Here's Guinan. We've seen this color Get before. Away. Stop. Stay back. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Don't touch me. I think Guinan's having Stop a it. bad day. Don't talk to me. Refuse to acknowledge you. Stop talking to me. Stop it. I won't do what you want. I. I. Who do? This is a bad day. We need to find him wherever yeah. the hell he is and Dr. get him some help. Hmm. Speaking of him. If you remember from uh, episode uh, two, Are toward the end, well? we found I'm that... just having some trouble getting along with my son. I'm fine. Please continue. That Dimitri has kind of inhabited his body, uh, Guinan's body, that is. And so there is a lot of stuff going on here between the two of them. They seem to be occupying the same body, yet at the s at same time, we see both of them acting independently. Uh, it seems that Guinan knows what's going on, but hasn't warned. Yes, sir. Currently, the operational Junior. experiments are underway in the research ward. Now, you probably will not recall, but if we go back to episode two, and when we were diving into Momo's subconscious domain, some of the cutscenes there showed the life that Junior, Albedo, and Guinan had when they were younger. And they did meet a single female URTV, who was Citrine. So the fact that she's here with Dmitry Yuryev, the guy who created all the URTVs, is significant information. And the information. doctor wishes to give you a report. I see. Accompany me, Citrine. Yes, sir. Some kind of mech on there. I'm not sure which one that is. Based on what I'm thinking, it's probably a specific one. One that could be represented by a Greek letter, if I'm thinking who it is properly. But I could be wrong. We'll take this one a little longer today. I wasn't expecting this cutscene to play out when I went so down to the surface. So, oh to well. Come listen to me, Dmitry Yuryev. Now, I see you're as unfriendly as ever, Sellers. If you recall, in episode one, I believe it was, I mentioned there was a guy named Sellers who was this dude with weird glasses. And he was working with Margulis last time. And as far as we know, Yuryev is not working with Margulis. I don't have much time. Just tell me the results. You're as bad as Margulis. You commanders are so inflexible. Anyway. The startup experiment has already succeeded. The problem is... What? Look at these values. I can't see them. I the still can't the see them. The temporal lobe is unstable. Perhaps there's a problem in the link with the pilot. This is based on the prototype recovered from the ruins of Milsha. It was originally calibrated for an Ormus priest, so these results are unsurprising. Which Same priest? as the power supply. It was designed to match the original Zohar. Currently, we're operating it using the spare emulator unit I constructed. But because of it, the output is unstable, and the link with the pilot is poor. So you're not very good. Are you good. saying it won't run? Exactly the opposite. It generates too much power, and we're unable to stop it. Federation's technicians are no fools, but Ormus is much more experienced in regards to this. If we at least had Vector participating, the outcome might have been a little different. Oh! Why did you remove them from the project? 
Yes, why would you the do Lama that? The Lamagetan incident. I'm sure you're aware they were involved in it. I don't know what he's scheming, but I can't allow him to gain top secret information. Him? What about the alternative you're using in place of Cosmos? Right, we Have heard about that. Have you determined its origin? It may be another vector plot. Okay. I have been working on that now. Even There's if it was, it's still just an anti-gnosis weapon. We'll just use it for our own purpose. There seems to be a lot of subterfuge going on around here. Everyone seems to be working with everybody else, behind everybody else's back, and behind those people's back, they're working with the people that they're working with. Basically, it's confusing as all hell. You don't know where anyone's allegiances are at this point in the game. No. Give me an update on the Macabre. No visible problems with that thing. We've already completed the final calibration. Thanks to the Y data you brought. Yes. Did I hurt your pride? Take that how you like. But I hope you appreciate my work. Yes, yeah, somehow, um... Yuryev was able to get his hands on the Y data that Albedo stole from Momo in Episode 2. Now, he has access to it, and Albedo had access to it, and if you recall what happened at the end of Episode 2, so does the Vector CEO Wilhelm. So a lot of people seem to have access to this information that was so isolated for so long. I painfully reconstructed it by putting the fragments together. It would almost have been faster to build it from scratch. Of course, with the core in this condition, I can't guarantee its safety. There's not much time left before the demonstration. I trust you'll have it ready by then. <laughs> of course. Otherwise, there'd be no point of me being here. What is the point of you being here? By the way, have you found an opponent? For? You're going to need something impressive to fight this thing. Don't worry. That's already been arranged. Oh? Uh, it's the perfect opponent to silence the fools that support Vector. Oh, no. There's only one thing that could possibly be chosen if that's the case. Big news! Big news! Hey, where's the new chief? Six months later and he's You're still the new chief? New chief? He went out to the city. He said he was meeting someone. Hi, Chaos. A meeting? Oh, he must have gone to see Chief Uzuki. What does yeah. he think he's doing at a time like this? Trying to get he laid? just tell her he's in love with her. He needs to make up his mind and act. You know he's not going to do that. By Uzuki, you mean Shion Uzuki, the former chief? She took responsibility for the Gnosis terrorism and resigned, right? Was she Chief Ridgely's girlfriend? What? <laughs> If she were, he would be delirious. Sounds about but right. reality is harsh. That it is. So, what's the big news? Did something happen? Oh, yeah. Cosmos is going to be the opponent for the new weapon in the demonstration. Yeah. New weapon? Yeah. You mean that? Yeah, that crazy thing. I guess they want to acquire real-world combat data along with the activation test. But they've sure got a lot of confidence to pick Cosmos as the opponent. They must. Yeah, they may have removed her from the project, but she's still ready for combat. Do That's they think good. they can win over support if it defeats Cosmos? Probably. Yeah, I hear there's a lot of Vector-friendly parliament members in the government. It's probably a move to take some wind out of that faction. I can't believe they're using the product of our stress and caffeine as a political tool. They'll learn not to mess with the Princess of First Division. We're gonna send them packing. Sounds like a plan. Damn it! We need to get started on the calibration work right away! What the hell is the new chief doing at a time like this? Same thing he's always done. He spent all of episode one gallivanting around with us. Anyway, sorry that episode ended up so long. I should not have uh, done much when I got to uh, Fifth Jerusalem here, but... Yeah, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. So next time, we will explore Fifth Jerusalem on the downside of it after going four hours down that very long tube. Anyway, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.